QuickBooks Online 2023 e-commerce sales manual journal entry method Excel example. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below, duplicating some tabs to put the reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab to duplicate it. And then we're gonna right click the tab to duplicate it. Let's go back to that middle tab, down to the reports on the left hand side. And we wanna open up the balance sheet to start off with as it's thinking. We'll tab to the right, reports on the left hand side. This time let's open up the P and the L, the profit and the loss. Let's close the hamburger and change the range from 110125 to let's say 11325 and run it and then tab into the middle closing the hamburger i'm going to go from 110125 to 11325 and run that one as well now in prior presentations we've been thinking about our support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it e-commerce situation where we're selling inventory but not on ground in a store rather online using some kind of application such as a shopify uh, for example and last time we thought about the easiest method to basically track the Shopify income as it pulls in to our system, that being just waiting till the thing hits the bank account and uh, using the bank feeds to enter it into the system. And we saw that although that is quite easy, it does have some limitations in that we don't get as much detail in terms of the actual items uh, that, are, that are broken out. We have a net amount that's actually coming into our bank account. So we might want more detail for tax preparation to deal with sales tax issues and also to uh, just have more information for our decision-making purposes. So I'm gonna do this in Excel first because Excel is kind of the most transparent way to see this. And then we'll do a similar process in QuickBooks. Now note, when we look at this process, you can think of it, we're gonna think of it as a manual process first but this is what a lot of the applications are doing as well. So when we get into the apps, including the integration, the QuickBooks app integration, what is it doing? It's not pulling most of these apps and the ones most people recommend is not pulling every transaction in as though it was a sales receipt mirroring a perpetual inventory system like we would have in an on-ground shop. Instead, it's summarizing the data in some way. So whether you're going to use an app or not, it's useful to first think what what would be the manual method do, to do if I was just going to try to pull the information in so we can understand what the apps are doing. So you could use this manual method so you don't have the integrations and the other apps and or you can you can use this as a stepping stone to understand what the apps are doing so that when you pull in the information uh, with the app, you have some ideas of, of why it's and how it's doing what it's doing okay so so if we go to our shopify the the general idea is if we have an online platform we're concentrated on shopify now we might do an amazon uh comparison uh in a future presentation but the idea would be that you get the information from the shopify and we're not trying to pull in every single transactions so for example if i go to my analysis in the Shopify and I go into the reports and I'm going to take a look at the total sales report here 
these are all the transactions that have happened obviously this is not much happening in this particular shopify but that's all the stuff that's happening i don't want to pull in each of these individual items as a separate sale in quickbooks for many of the reasons we talked about before it overwhelms the system and all that and i already have the information here what i want to do instead uh, is to group this information together in some way shape or form so that i can have a lump sum pull into my system now, what is pulling into our system as we saw last time are the bank feeds. So, so that means that there's already a grouping going on by in essence Shopify that's gonna tie out to the payouts that they're gonna be giving us. So that means that we wanna tie out, we can try to summarize all the data that happens per payout that we're gonna get that we already said and saw that hits our bank account, right? So. If we look at the payouts, then if I go to like my finances up top and we go to the payouts, I can go in here and say, all right, there's my payout. So I want to basically look at all the data that ties to the payouts. Now, I believe Shopify pays out like every day, whereas something like an Amazon pays out every every uh, two weeks or something like that. But the general idea is we'd like to enter this so it ties into the payout. So if I go into here, for example, I can see uh, my my data, the gross and the fees uh, related to the payout that's happening here. And then I can see the transactions that took place and the transactions numbers and the date that it took place here. So when I go on over to my bank feeds for this particular example, I, I integrated this example. So this isn't a manual one, but if, but this one I used the commerce, which we'll talk about later in order to connect the Shopify and if I look at the commerce tab, that same data kind of pulls in to the to the orders and then the payout. So here's the actual payout. It also pulls in to the payout tab up here, which we'll talk about in future presentations. And then in the banking side of things, I, I should see a deposit that's gonna come through on the bank for this uh, 715 right that we're going to tie into okay so that's the general idea so then i want to run a report on this side that's going to tie into the total this 870 before the fees because the fees are being charged here on the shopify payout thing and in the analysis side if i go to the reports and if you have a higher level of of uh plan you might have better reports but if i go into the total sales tab and I run this thing for just that day. And I look at the invoices to make sure I have the same batching of invoices. I have one more invoice. I believe this last one was not in there. So this totals up to, to the 480 on the gross. And then we had uh, we had shipping, which brought it up. We charged for shipping to 980, 970 minus that $1 to bring it because this one wasn't included before and that gets us to that 870 number so so this we have a little bit different example in excel from these numbers to make it a little bit more complex but we're mirroring that kind of concept over here right so we have the sales side of things we have the sales and we had discounts in this example no returns here's the sales and there's the shipping and we imagine that we had sales tax collected in this particular example to get us to the sales the amount that we we uh, pulled in 166991 we then imagined that we didn't just have the shopify pay which is which is what we're using in our example but also connected i'm sorry that we didn't just have yeah just the shopify but we also connected the paypal right so then we have the paypal in there and some of the payments were paid out with paypal paypal charges their own fees and then the rest was paid out from Shopify. So that's the general concept. And then in this screen, this screen is basically mirroring the payout screen that we looked at. We see that the we're charging that added 1548 in this case for the payouts that were for the Shopify sales. Now, last time we did our little Excel worksheet, imagining we just wait till the payouts hit the bank account. In this case, we would have two payouts, one from PayPal, one from Shopify. And we just said that the checking account's gonna go up, the, the PayPal account's gonna go up, and then sales is gonna go up for the other side of the transaction. 
and then we made an adjustment to kind of tie into the 1099 imagining we got a 1099 at the end of the year however that's some estimates that are happening there and we're, we're losing some more detail of the data if we want to add more detail of the data we could take this information we're imagining basically came from the reports we looked at from shopify and try to put that into our system with a journal entry so let's see what this it gets a little bit more complex let's see what this will look like and in excel and then we'll do the same thing in uh, a quickbook so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this part from f to m i'm going to right click and i mean i'm just going to well you could right click and copy <laughs> and then i'm going to put that right here uh, and right click and paste it and then i'm going to hide this stuff because i i want to see my data on the left hand side I'm going to put my cursor on f the skinny and go on over to m right click and hide all of that stuff and so now we've got a nice little worksheet that we can work on i'm going to just delete everything that's in it i'm going to make that red thing go away by by putting my cursor up here and go into the home tab font i mean format painter and paint brushy that away and then let's make this uh get rid of that data all right so now we've got our nice little system that we can we can put in here in a journal entry type of format so now what i want to do is think about a journal entry that's going to help me to 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 grab all of the detail from these reports so we'll make and you can start to format just a, a generic journal entry when we do this in quickbooks and this again is similar to what apps some apps are doing when they're trying to integrate and pull in data into the system a similar kind of process here so we'll start off with the shopify sales i'm not going to worry about debits being on top right i'm going to pull it in as i'm thinking about it right so i'm going to say well i know that i have a shopify sales so let's just call that shopify sales i'm going to say equals that one and the shopify sales are the gross sales from our report i'm going to put the sales as a negative so i'm going to say negative of this number because revenue from a debit and credit standpoint is a credit and i'm representing credits with negative numbers i know that's a little bothersome to people but we have to deal with debits and credits <laughs> when we do the journal entry so uh so that's what we'll do and i'm dealing with one column because that's the most efficient way to deal with it and negative numbers in excel so i highly recommend if you're an accountant thinking about formatting like that because it really saves space and then we've got the shopify discount so shopify discount and we said that one is going to be a debit so i have it as a negative number over here so i need to flip the sign i'm going to say negative of that number i'm just pulling in the data with formulas which is my habit of doing when i'm when i'm working a practice problem to have the data over here and then pull the information in with formulas okay so then so so this was the sales and then we had discounts which lower it's going to be kind of like lowering the sales right so we could we could record that separately as like a a uh, contra sales line so here's my sales and then the discounts we could group them together here's my sales after the discounts right but the whole point is here we're breaking out some of the detail of these line items and then if we had uh if we had shopify returns we didn't have any Shopify returns, but just for the sake of keeping our journal entry with all the different components that could be in here, we'll put that in there and then Shopify uh, shipping income. So now we're going to say, hey, look, this is what we our sales number was, but then we had uh, shipping income, meaning we charged the client, you know, for the for the shipping. So that's so we had to collect another 46 and that should be negative because it's going to be an income amount so it's going to be a revenue amount and then we had uh sales tax payable so let's say we had sales tax payable and so this is um, an amount that we charged the client for the sales tax but we're going to owe it to the government so th we should in theory put it in the books on as a payable it shouldn't hit the income statement. So we collected that from the client, but it's gonna go into our books as uh, not revenue, but rather a payable. 
And then I'm gonna say we have the Shopify clearing account, Shopify, uh, Shopify clearing account. Now the clearing account is people question like why, why do we need uh, the clearing account? Because we're gonna try to not put it directly into the checking account because notice that I'm getting this information from reports and, and the Shopify clearing is, is gonna eventually clear out into the checking account, but we're not there yet. And before I do the clearing, basically, hold on, I'll get into the clearing in a second. Before I do the clearing, uh, let's do the Shopify, let's do the Shopify PayPal clearing account first. So the PayPal clearing, why do we need a PayPal clearing? Same kind of thing that we're looking at these reports, which show that there was a payment that went through the payment portal of PayPal. So we, we, someone got on our Shopify store. They didn't use the Shopify payments. They used the third party integration of PayPal. So we expect then the deposit to, to come in through PayPal into our bank feeds. Although there could be fees related to that amount, which we'll have to deal with on the PayPal level of things. So instead of putting this directly into the PayPal checking account, we could do that because then we can try to match the PayPal checking account to this report, but it might not match exactly because of the fees on the PayPal level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this into a clearing account. And then when the, when the, pro, when the payment comes through, the deposit comes through on the checking account, will net out the clearing account so the clearing account goes back to zero this is one of the most confusing components not only with this manual entry process but with a lot of the apps that people kind of recommend so you're going to have to deal with this concept <laughs> and so it's useful to see it in excel so you can kind of see what's going on here so then we have shopify fees so let's pick up the fees down here these are the fees you'll recall that happened on the payout report the fees from Shopify because these are the sales that were paid out with the Shopify pay, not with the third party PayPal integration and Shopify charged us, you know, the fees then, which we, which we're going to see come through uh, before we get the payment that comes out. So, we, so this payment should tie out exactly to what we get in our checking account. Whereas this payment for to the PayPal most likely will not because PayPal is still going to hit us with some fees before it hits our bank account. So we're going to say, all right, this one is going to be this uh, 354. Actually, hold on a sec. This is the 15 and I need to flip the sign. So there it is. Okay. And then I'm going to have the Shopify clearing account, Shopify payments clearing account. So this is the other one that eventually, and that's going to be, let's put, pull the number in. That's going to be this number. This is the other one that will eventually uh, go into the checking account. And we could put this one directly into the checking account probably because, because this is the amount that exactly should hit our checking account because there shouldn't be any other fees because we're getting this information directly from Shopify, not a third party payment app like PayPal where the PayPal is gonna hit us with fees. So if I put this directly into the checking account, then I probably, once the deposit clears the checking account, could use the matching mechanism in QuickBooks and that would probably work okay. But this idea of using these, these uh, clearing accounts is usually a good practice because then if there is any discrepancies, then we can deal with it on the clearing account level. So we'll see what these clearing accounts do. Now, if there was anything that was inconsistent or there's any variance or deviations because let's say this report was more complicated and there's some minor difference or something like that i'm going to do the negative sum this is my plug formula and plug any difference there there is no difference here debits and credits match which should be the case if we put these reports in correctly so there so our 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 journal entry at least is in balance right so let's let's post this out and see if we can make sense of this process. All right. So now we've got the sales, the Shopify sales. That's going to be posted to our trial balance, which is basically our balance sheet on top of our income statement. I'm going to put my cursor in T10 and just say equals that 1624.89. And so there's that. Remember, that's a revenue, by the way. You can see it's green down here, even though it's a, a negative number because we're talking debits and credits here. <laughs> and then 
let's do this one at a time. I'll make this. That's done. I'll make it green, just so we can see what what we're doing. I sometimes do this with long journal entries. So we're gonna say, okay, Shopify discount. That's gonna be like a contra revenue account. So it's on the income statement side. It's gonna affect net income, and it basically brings the the net sales down. So that's a debit decreasing the net income. And then the Shopify returns, we didn't have any, but I'm gonna put it here. So that's green, boom, I'll greenify these two, greenify. And then we got Shopify, uh, sh sh Shopify shipping income. This is what we charged for the shipping. So we charge them, that's gonna bring up our income again because we have the income going up. And then when we pay for the shipping, we'll have to deal with the expense of the shipping, right? So this is still an income because we charged for the for the shipping of the clients, increasing net income. And then we've got the sales tax payable. So this, although we collected it from the client to pay for the sales tax, which in theory is on them, we're gonna put it up here in, a, in our liability account. Uh, seals tax, we need to tax those seals. Okay, so we're gonna put that here. That's still wrong. That's still wrong. Crying out loud. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna put that here. So this is gonna be equal to the fifteen forty five. Doesn't affect the net income. And we're gonna have to pay that out. When we pay it out, we'll just decrease the checking account and we'll pay that sales tax out. So that allows us to kind of track the sales tax a little bit better. Notice that we we can't really track the sales tax as nicely as we would like to within the QuickBooks system because we, we're not using the sales receipts in invoice forms. So we have to come up with a way to deal with the sales tax. Okay, so then then we've got the Shopify clearing account. So this is the amount that's gonna go into the checking account, but we're, f how, how about, what about the fees? Oh no, the, yeah, the Shopify clearing account. This is the amount that's gonna go into the checking account, but we're first gonna put it into the clearing and this is the paypal clearing the amount that the that people paid with the third party paypal rather than with the shopify pay and then we have the fees so these are fees on the shopify payments now remember that that people use the shopify pay to buy stuff so we're going to go to the fees and where where did i put the fees Okay, here they are. And notice you could put the fees into cost of goods sold or uh, or you might put them put them down here. I'm gonna rename this. This is why it messed me up. It's, I'm calling it fees and charges. Let's do that. Okay, and then, uh, but, or you could put it into some people. There's debate on whether that should be in cost of goods sold or an expense, but you know, it's an expense you know, a cost to get sold is a type of expense. So it's going to be a decrease to the net income, bottom line. And then you got the Shopify uh, payment clearing. This is the amount that's ultimately going to go into our checking account, not our PayPal account from Shopify for those sales that happened through the Shopify payment processor. And then if we had any differences, we would just dump the difference uh, into our our sales Shopify sales there are none because we did it perfectly so so there we have it so there's the idea and then what's going to happen at this point in time you've got these two clearing accounts those are you might say well those are ugly like why do I have clearing accounts what does that what does that even mean that should be money the money is going to go into our checking account and our PayPal checking account uh, but we didn't want to put these directly into those accounts because in case there's an, a discrepancy, which there almost certainly would be with the PayPal one, because PayPal is probably going to charge us a fee. So we're going to put them into the clearing account first and then use the bank feeds that are going to come through on, on QuickBooks. So now if we're in QuickBooks, we're going to be in our bank feeds, which we're going to have integrated. So if I go into my banking up top, and we would see these amounts come through on the bank side. And as they did, we're not gonna assign the other side to income like we did in the prior example, but rather we're just gonna reduce the clearing account because we already assigned it to income. This, by the way, is similar to the concept of using 
the undeposited funds or the funds to be deposited account. Uh, if you've if you've dealt with QuickBooks on that, in other words, if I look at my flow chart, sometimes when we have the invoices and the sales receipt, let's say we have the sales receipt, we make sales uh, and we need to group those sales in a grouping that is the same grouping that goes into the bank account. So if I had 10 sales for cash, I'm going to deposit them into the bank as one lump sum. So I don't want to put them into my checking account as 10 separate payments because I won't be able to match that to the checking account. Therefore, we put this into a clearing account, which QuickBooks used to call undeposited funds. And now it's called like payments to deposit or something. And then when we make the deposit, we take it out of that undeposited funds, that clearing account serving its purpose of helping us to group the deposits into the checking account in such a way that they'll tie out to what's gonna be on the bank statement. So a clearing account different than a temporary account, temporary accounts being income statement accounts that roll into the equity section, the clearing accounts usually will go back to zero on a much shorter time frame than, a, than like the temporary accounts, which close out to equity. So, so in other words, what we expect to happen is once we see this information clear the bank, I expect then to have say uh, the the PayPal, let's go to the PayPal uh, checking, and and say that we're actually going to see this amount come into PayPal now, and let's say it was for that uh, one two nine nine fifty five. Now it's likely that there would be a fee. So let let's say it was more like let's say the amount that came in was like one two nine uh, four or something that came into the to the PayPal checking account. So then we would have fees that we would have to possibly deal with at that point in time. So we'd have more fees for the PayPal, which sometimes if you use the PayPal integration, PayPal might uh, might show those fees uh, in the integration. So I'm going to say this minus this are the fees. And then we're going to say that is going to come out of the, the PayPal clearing account negative sum of these two right so now we're going to say okay i see this hitting my paypal account in the bank feeds cool paypal boom and this is how much we thought was going to hit the bank but i knew that wasn't right because paypal hit us with a fee of five dollars and 55 cents before they deposited this amount into the bank so now we've got more fees and you might want to charge fees for different kinds of fees paypal fees versus other fees and whatnot can be useful so you can kind of track you know who's charging you more fees <laughs> but but uh you know you may, maybe you don't need to do that but that might be worth doing i'll just put in the fees right now and then shopify paypal clearing if i double click on this one and then say plus that boom it goes back down to zero that's what a clearing account does we moved it from here up to the checking account and accounted for the added bit of fees that paypal hit us with so now we're going to say the checking accounts the same thing in the checking account this is the amount that was paid through the shopify app uh we're going to imagine that we see this amount come into the checking account in the bank feeds and so now we're going to say okay cool uh the other side is going to come out of the shopify payments and it should be perfect with no added fees because this is the Shopify payment portal and they we already saw their fees. So we've got those picked up already. So then I can go into the checking account and say bank feeds. We'll pick that up in the checking, check it out, checking, checked it. And then we go to the Shopify clearing account and boom, plus this one, it goes back down to zero, clears back out. So now you can see this is a way that we we kind of get to the, to the same end result for the most part although i added fees for the paypal up here then our last method but we we're tracking the detail as we go and that possibly could help us with the sales tax too which is something that can muddy things up if i'm just waiting until something hits the bank so if i unhide uh over here unhide i'm gonna unhide by going from e to o right click and unhide so you'll recall under the cash method I just kind of recorded everything as sales and then I made a, a little bit of an adjustment and just dumped everything into fees, right? 
to adjust it. But over here, and then, and this amount, obviously, if PayPal hit us with a fee, would be lower from the fee because I tweaked it a little bit over here. But on this side, we said we get the detail, right? So this is actually, so this, so this amount here should be equal or greater to any 1099 that we get because the 1099 should be based on the gross sales number and we need to report something for taxes greater or equal to the 1099 generally otherwise we're likely to get you know the irs might have questions about it right and but now we're we're more accurately breaking out the the discounts versus the shipping and stuff charges and then other charges which we could break out more specifically to PayPal charges and Shopify charges, and we can more easily break out our sales tax, possibly helping us out with uh, dealing with our sales tax type of situation. So you can see this could be helpful for federal income taxes, obviously. It could be helpful for sales tax, and it could be quite helpful for your internal decision making because again, most people are pretty good at Shopify when they're like when when they like really like these Shopify or online stores at picking products and whatnot, but possibly not sometimes the, they're not so good at, at to start off with the the de dealing with minimizing costs like like shipping costs and fees and whatnot from different payment processors and which payment processor would be the best to use should we just have all the payment processors because that might increase our sales or should we limit the payment processors because some of them charge us way more fees than others and whatnot those kind of questions and then what kind of inventory should we be should we be purchasing is easier to kind of determine if you have a bigger a better breakout of your of your income numbers and then we'll talk about cost of goods sold which is the other half that we'll think about at a, a future point so it could help with of course internal decision making so this is the manual method but it also kind of mirrors what we'll talk about later which is the which is the some of the integration app methods and what the apps do and next time we'll put this into QuickBooks maybe.